Hello everybody, you're watching a series on Sugar Bites Factory, my name's Tom Cosm and I'm going to finish this series with this video talking about the sample and the hold. I've been having so much fun today creating these kind of self-generative soundscape type sounds just using sample and hold and some random functions of the LFO. You'll notice that I'm not playing any notes whatsoever right now, this is all completely just the synth playing on its own. Really amazing stuff and uh, yeah, using the sample and hold is really, really, really powerful for this kind of thing. So let's get started and explain how it works. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to kill this very nice patch, but we'll make it again. So let's take a look at how the sample and hold works first. There's two different inputs we can specify. One is a trigger input and one is an input that gets sampled whenever the trigger input goes over a certain threshold. So for example, here's my threshold fader here. If I set it in the middle, it's currently attached to LFO1 and we can see we're getting LFO1 moving up and down here. Every time this blue line goes over the point of the threshold that I've set, it takes a sample from wherever LFO2 is. It grabs the state of LFO2, which you can see displayed here over on the far right. So if I bring the LFO speed up quite fast, you'll see that this point where it triggers the threshold is actually really, really fast now, and we're getting much more updated versions of where LFO2 is currently at. You can see the relationship between where this LFO2 indicator is and where this uh, sample and hold indicator is here. Again, if I bring it slower, we get much smoother transitions like so. There's also a few other options here. The quantize makes things a bit more coarse, but the lag makes things a lot more smoother. So if I bring the lag up, you'll notice that it's now shifting between those points that are getting sampled. So this is nice and smooth now. It's still stopping at the right points of where it needs to be, but it's making the transition nice and smooth. It's kind of like a glide for the signal in a way. Okay, so let's make something. First thing I'm going to do is remove envelope 1 from the master volume fader. What that means is the oscillators will play continuously, so I'm going to turn them down first because it will be quite loud when I do this. I'm going to go into this drop down menu and choose off, and now if I bring OSC1 up, you can hear that it's playing continuously. I'm going to be using a wavetable drone for this as it's really nice for kind of atmospheric, kind of textured kind of stuff, and I'm going to use the CPO AM wavetable. Let's bring the wave up a bit and the jitter and we'll bring the OSC one up. So we've already got some cool texture stuff going on. What I might do first here is I'm going to turn on a spring reverb just to give it that added kind of atmosphere. Bit of size, bit of tail. I'm going to make the low cut around 140 hertz because we're going to be doing some bass stuff and I don't want it to be too reverberated. Already sounding nice, but let's go back to the sample and hold. So over to our modulators tab, I'm going to be using LFO1 as the trigger, but I'm going to turn the sync off and I'm going to use this interesting type of shape here. It kind of sends random spikes. It's kind of, uh, I think it's called the Geiger mode. It's quite neat. I'm going to bring the rate down quite slow and you can see the trigger here is triggering at random intervals. It's sending spikes or quick jolts over to the trigger of the sample and hold. So that's all good, but for the source to be sampled, I'm actually going to use the sub oscillator. So every time this spikes, it's going to take a sample of wherever the sub oscillator is at, and that's currently set on oscillator 2. So now we have our sample and hold set up. I'm going to go into my one of my sources and choose it as a source, and we can start applying this to various things in the synth. I'm going to start by applying it to A and B of OSC1, which gives us that great texture. So OSC1A, let's bring it up a little bit. And you can see we're getting quite a lot of random kind of uh, spikes on this A, which is very nice. I'm also going to apply it to OSC1B, but we'll go in the negatives just a little bit. Let's bring the volume up a bit. I will bring the uh, spring reverb down just a little bit so you can hear the example. I like it a lot, but we don't want it to be too noisy while I'm showing you how this works. Okay, the next cool thing I'm going to show you is in the Articulation tab, we can set the scale to minor. So we can set it to a bunch of different scales. I'm going to choose minor, and that means we can now use the pitch quantize as a destination. Pitch 1 would just kind of randomly choose a pitch in the oscillator 1, but if we choose pitch 1 quantize, it's going to randomly choose something in a minor scale, which is really neat. We can actually get the sample and hold playing random melodies with the oscillator. So I'm going to select that and bring that up. Okay. 
Let's make the LFO a bit faster. Very nice. So just with one oscillator, a bit of reverb and the sample and hold on that pitch, we're getting a really nice evolving melodic kind of thing going on. Another cool thing we could do with the sample and hold is bring the lag up. Remember the lag kind of glides between each individual sample point. So if we bring that up quite a lot, You can hear it's still kind of snapping to the minor scale as it slides between all the pitches. Which I think is quite fantastic to be honest. <laughs> I like it very much. Um, what else should we do? Now let's let's leave oscillator 2 for now. Let's add some sub hits. So I'm just going to bring the sub up. So you, if you're on your laptop speakers you might not be able to hear this but we've got a nice pure sine wave tone. I'm going to bring the sub up but I'm going to bring the modulatable volume down and I'm going to assign envelope 1 to the sub level. I'll give that a very positive amount and go over to our envelope 1 which is here. I'm going to make sure the sustain is all the way down, have quite a long decay time and I'm going to set the uh, trigger as LFO1 which again is sending the spike to the sample and hold. I also want it to spike and trigger the this envelope one so that means we're going to get random bass spikes now and then kind of like a nice bass note that fades away just like that very nice let's play with oscillator 2 now I'm gonna bring it up actually I'll change it to another wavetable drone for now and I'll choose the CPO FM wavetable for this one let's bring that up and let's move the A and the B around And of course, we can apply the sample and hold to OSC 2A and OSC 2B as well. We'll go in the negatives and then in the positives here. Let's bring the pitch uh, quantize down a little bit. And I'll bring the LFO rate down a little bit as well, so it's not happening so much. Let's bring the spring reverb up just to hear what it sounds like when it's really... I, I love this kind of stuff, so we'll just have a listen. Very good. What I might do is bring the cutoff down halfway, and I'm going to assign the cutoff to the sample and hold as well. And let's give that quite a positive value. Bring the resonance up a bit. Some drive. What I also might do is, this, is assign this envelope 1 where the bass hit is happening. I'm going to assign the envelope 1 to the oscillator 2 level and bring the oscillator 2 level down as well. So oscillator 2 is going to only kind of trigger with that envelope that is also triggering the bass hit. And I will need to give that a positive value in the link between the envelope 1 and oscillator 2. very nice so it kind of adds a nice textured hit here we've got a few more slots here what I might do is let's attach envelope 2 which we haven't used yet to the noise level and I'll give that uh, around 50% positive value uh, if, if we go over to envelope 2 I'm going to give it quite a lot of attack uh, put the sustain about halfway and have quite a lot of release and we haven't used LFO 2 yet either so I'm going to link this to LFO 2 I'm going to go to LFO2, again choosing this interesting Geiger random spike mode, turn off sync mode, and make this not as slow as this one, but we'll make it quite slow as well. So this is getting triggered here, I might actually bring the sustain all the way down, and now if I bring the noise up, I'm just trying to find a nice little random noise sweep now and then. Bit more release, bit more attack. Very nice, and we've got one more slot here we can use, so let's do something a bit weird. Um, I know this isn't going to sound amazingly melodic or harmonic, but let's attach the sample and hold to the spring reverb size, which is going to do some weird pitch shifting stuff. 
So I need to select FX1 from my destinations here and I'll give it a positive value and then remember we have to click on these little arrows to define what an FX1 is actually going to be assigned. So I'm going to choose the size. So that's quite chaotic. Just for fun, I'm gonna bring the spring reverb all the way down. Let's put something different on it. Let's put a groove delay instead. We'll bring the stereo width up to a maximum amount and we'll make it a quarter note triplet on the right hand side. Turn it on, see what it sounds like with a delay instead. Bring the echoes up so we get quite a lot of feedback. It's very nice. It totally didn't sound how I thought it was going to sound when I'm making it, but I really, really like this patch already. Um, and now, now we can kind of cycle through the wavetables if you like. You can get completely new textures just by clicking on the left or right arrows. So I'll finish with that. Let's see if we can get some different sounds happening. We could even make this tuned up 12 semitones, bring that pitch quantize up a lot. So I'm going to leave it there, that is the sample and hold, this is one use of the sample and hold, it's a really powerful little unit at this thing, um, it's also got the quantize and the lag which makes it a bit different than normal sample and holds as well, uh, yeah a lot of fun to be had. So I'm going to finish the series there with this nice little outro and this lush pad. My name's Tom Cosm, thank you so much for watching. Factory is an amazing synth, I highly recommend you get your hands on this and have a play. Catch you later.